Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Yao Zhao to you. Uh, Yao received his uh, bachelor's and master's degree from Tsinghua University in Computer Science, and he will receive his uh, PhD degree in Computer Science from Northwestern University next week, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, uh, Yao uh, with us for the past uh, uh, few months uh, doing the internship. So today he will uh, tell us about his internship project. So without further ado, let's welcome Yao. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Yinan, for the introduction. Um, I will talk about my intern work, utility maximization based P2P multi party video conferencing. Uh, this is a joint work with my mentor, Yinan Wu, and uh, Ming Hua Chen, Jing Li, Bao Chun Li, Sanjeev, and the Phil. And, uh, we also got you know, a, tough, a lot of help from the other guys from the CCS group. OK. Um, so I think a lot of people actually you know, want those multi-party video conferencing. A lot of times you know, when, when we you know, discuss problem remotely, we hope that we have such kind of application at, at hand. Um, for the multi-party video conferencing, it uh, you know is kind of different to the current uh, live streaming or on-demand uh, stuff. First, it has high rate. Actually, you know every source, every participant uh, has a re video rate of such as about 400k bps. Then, if you consider you have a you know a conference of four people, the rate is actually very very high. And also, it has very you know a critical requirement on the delay. It uh, requires usually the delay of the video packet to be less than 200 milliseconds, so as people can have good uh, uh, experience. And also, um, usually the scale of the video conference is is small. You know, just uh, three, four people, or even five people. Uh, it's not like uh, the P2P living. You have hundreds of people uh, watching the same video. Um, so usually. Uh, People, you know, come up uh, with the server-based solution, which is simple, and uh, actually uh, the server can has a lot of benefits to to support the good quality service. For example, uh, like Microsoft Office Communicator and uh, Cisco has Web Web EX. So, um, but the problem for the server-based solution is the server itself is a kind of bottleneck in the whole system. It's not scalable. You cannot uh, really hold, you know a lot of number of sessions because of the bandwidth and the computation limits on the server. So that's why uh, people also want the peer-to-peer -peer based solutions, which you know, the peers, uh, the participants of the conferencing can help to also transfer the video data. So iVisit is, kind of, is one product that I found online. Uh, it claims that it's the first P2P based uh, video conferencing system. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know the detail because it's a kind of commercial product. And uh, um, the academia side, and we have like mutual cost and uh, um, utility maximization for the P2P systems, which is a Sigmatrix 08 paper. And they discussed, uh, um, they do not mainly focus on video conferencing, but uh, they kind of similar for the uh, uh, P2P system and uh, can be potentially used for the video conferencing. Mm -hmm. so where would you put Skype? Um, Skype itself doesn't support the multi-party video conferencing. It does. It does. It does. Yeah, I can yeah? use it. I think it's like it replicates the stream so. Okay. Yeah. I s then um, probably uh, I should put Skype here as well. But because uh, I when I search online, I find uh, you know generally people say it doesn't support, and uh, there are some uh, plugin to duplicate those uh, those 
those uh, video copies so that they can make the multi-party conferencing. Okay, um, so many in this uh, P2P based uh, multi-party video conferencing because of the critical requirement and the delay, uh, it makes the problem to be very challenging. You basically have to um, make sure that uh, your video rate to be well controlled so that everybody can get the video packet in real time. You cannot do something like the uh, live streaming or on-demand streaming. In that case, you know, people usually uh, watch the video which is like uh, one minute or 30 seconds after, after the real time of the video. And uh, this problem is, is especially challenging when the network resources are limited because uh, in that way, uh, you have to, you know, well control the well, um, well utilize the upload bandwidth of those uh, peers. Okay, um, yeah, in this talk, I will first uh, talk about the, mo the problem formulation and then describe our rate control algorithm. And then I will quickly discuss the, how we c deliver this uh, content, video content, with our rate control algorithms. And then I will show some evaluation results and finally some discussions and then conclusions. Um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. So how big typical video conferencing? Uh, usually it's more like uh, four participants. Yeah, I mean how, how big it can be? Because that would have huge impact on your design, right? Uh, yes. Do we have some like workloads? Like typically how big can be range from, I guess two people can have uh, conferencing, can they grow to 100 or typically on the order of 10? I think typically it should be less than 10 people. And, uh, and for like some commercial products, they usually you know, set some up limit on the number of people participating in the same conferencing, such as I visited, it allows at most six, eight people. Sorry. So small scale. Yes. And, uh, do we have any sense about the churns? Do people leave? Yes. Do only leave sure. all the time in video conferences? Uh, yes. Statistics? Sure. Because uh, if, 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 for example, you don't have uh, churns, life would be easy, right? Build a ring. Right. Distributed. Probably will be uh, better. Well, well maybe a ring minutes. still doesn't work. Why? Because the, the <laughs> upload benefit upload ben with limitation it's a ring, I upload to this guy, next up, next guy, next up. Right, but uh, maybe for the guy, it doesn't have like even 400 kbps upload rate. Maybe you are a mobile phone who, who want to, you know, attend the conference. I think the heterogeneity of the uplinks creates the uh, interesting problem. And also, you know, if you have five people, mm -hmm. if you build such a ring, the delay is pretty yeah. large. Right, right. I'm saying that if there's no churn, I can do a lot more fancier things than if there are churns. Yeah, definitely there are churns. And uh, you, you know, you, there are maybe even other TCP connections, you know, to make the bandwidth of the links to, you know, to change quickly. Yeah, okay. But presumably the churn is much lower. Yeah, people. much lower. People. Right. Yeah. yeah, people would be very implied to be in the middle of a really they just want to Yes. So we assume the churn rate is not very high, you know, it will be quite stable, but uh, like uh, in, high, in minutes. Yeah, but just want to understand, that would have huge impact on the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, for example, assume we have such topology and uh, say source and A you know, these two participants are in Redmond and uh, B and C are in Silicon Valley. And uh, they, you know, are connected uh, uh, through the routers. And uh, probably, you know, the green link here is the bottleneck here. And then, um, you know, if we have some rates, that's the, have some peer-to-peer -peer links sending the video data. For example, here we have source send something to A, source send something to B. And then, uh, actually, we want to know, you know, for such kind of peer-to-peer uh, -peer links, what's the rate, what's the actually ma maximum flow that the ABC can receive? Because that determines, you know, the video 
rate that uh, you receive. And it's well known that you know, for the maximal uh, flow problem, uh, it's actually e equivalent to the mean cut. So that's the you know, mean cut, maximum flow mean cut algorithm. Um, for the cut here, actually, you, know, um, you divided the, the nodes into two parts. And one part has the source S. And the other set has the destination, say, B here. And then uh, you, know, you compute the sum of all the links that are between these two sets from the first set to the second set. Then you get the cut capacity. And then uh, you compute uh, you know, the minimal of the cuts. Then actually that determines the maximum flow the destination node can receive. So this is actually the pretty you know, uh, general uh, problem. Um, one node for source for all of the mean of the mean. Mean of the mean cut. So that's the you know the final video rate for this system. So not many people are talking, right? Even in video conference, typically you just a few talk. Well, if you even you don't talk, you may people may still want to view your image. Right. And uh, actually, in this case, we you know, make it simpler, just to say one source and uh, a, a couple of you know, nodes want to watch your, your video. And if they do not subscribe your video, probably then, for example, here C, if C doesn't want to watch the video of A, then A doesn't have to send it to C. You then you move the C out of the, this channel. There is a problem, right? If you're just like sitting there talking about, suppose I have a mobile phone, therefore my radio, radio rate will be really low. Mm -hmm. One card for me is my option bandwidth. I'm a mobile device. Yeah. Does that mean you're going to use layered encoding, or you're going to say everyone can only watch the tiny bit bandwidth which can support the tiny cell phone? Um, well, that's actually you know a tough question. We are also you know thinking, do we really you know want to uh, make sure that everybody receive the same uh, rate, video rate, or you know, because of the mean cut problem, someone has received higher, someone received a lower. Right now, uh, we, you know, for the simplicity, we just assume that uh, everybody watch the same video content. But uh, you know, if you know, uh, the layered coding can be applied in this system, then you know, we can make them receive different uh, rates. But uh, you know, in practice, uh, I think layered coding uh, is not widely used yet. Okay. So anyway, so um, mean cut actually is what we care. I mean, the minimum of the mean cut of every peer is what we care for this system. So um, then. The goal is how to you know, make the mean cut to be as much as possible under the network uh, limitations. And actually, we don't know uh, the network topology, the underlying topology. And we don't know what's the available bandwidth on these links. So we have to you know, uh, figure out you know, uh, on these links what rate to send, and then finally they can achieve the best mean cut or they can achieve a certain mean cut so that you already can uh, achieve the good video rate, say 400 kbps. And the second question is, you know, even you kind of uh, allocate those link rate so that you can achieve good mean cut, but you still need to decide what to send along those P2P links. So what's the content? Generally, we can use uh, packing tree algorithm to send those packets using trees. Or we can use network coding to achieve mean cut. So these are the two typical approaches to achieve the mean cut in the network with a certain rate allocations. OK. Um, so one intuitive question is people have, now we have TCP. And uh, you know, TCP actually do not uh, consider the topology of the network. They, they don't know the topology. And the TCP will you know, kind of converge and finally uh, achieve the fairness and achieve the 
maximum rate. So maybe can we just use you know, TCP and on these links so that we can uh, discover the rate or the maximum rate that we can send over these peer-to-peer links. But actually, uh, we did some simulation and uh, you know, uh, for those previous topology, we have four nodes, then we have 12 TCP connections between every pair of node, and then we let them to run and to see how they converge. Uh, TCP does converge, but uh, you know, its rate fluctuate, um, fluctuates uh, extremely. So that in that case, you, know, you really don't want to use TCP because your video rate is not stable. You will see a suddenly in the high rate and then suddenly low rate. That's not good for the user experience. And uh, TFRC actually, you know, well, is. Well, even here, commonly, you really shouldn't say TCP because you should say TCP oh. new Reno or TCP uh, all kinds of collision control. Yeah, actually, I use TCP Reno. Yeah, thanks for. Sure. The right, because different yeah. control protocols and TCP just add like umbrella, right? And now that experiment you use Linux or Windows? I presume Windows. Uh, I actually use the. TCP Reno implementation in NS2. Oh, NS2. Yeah. Because now there's a new version, at least by default, Linux is using a different condition control protocol now. Well, right. Even, you know, the we use the, I, I don't think that we'll change the behavior like this convergence because, you know, when you receive loss, you have your rate. No, no, maybe no longer do that. Even the, the newer version will be different. Okay. Uh, yeah, but well, the point is, yes, there is a sense that, yes, you are doing the condition control protocol. Um, but at the same time, you look at your protocol, it starts to be a lot smoother. And as with all the problems, the, the, the renal uh, Yeah, that's renal. Mm -hmm. The newer one, not the default, they are using different protocols. OK. Yeah, that's our point. OK, okay. okay thanks. Yeah, I, we will look at uh, uh, the newer TCP versions. But uh, so far, I, I guess they still, you know, fluctuate. Will not be very stable. And uh, um, I also use the you know TFRC implementation in NS2 and I check how stable TFRC is. So it turns out, uh, you know, TFRC itself is try to make the you know rate to be more stable. That's the pur the purpose of TFRC. And uh, we can see that uh, it's more stable than TCP, but still because uh, when it find the loss, it will still half, half the rate. So you know, it's kind of uh, fluctuate use in some time. And uh, you know. TFRC, I believe the average eight loss intervals. Mm -hmm. There's no way they can cut to half in one loss. Uh, they may not do so, but uh, I mean, it, it mimics the behavior of TCP. Right, so, but the average out oh, is smooth out substantially. I think the average interval is like eight, I believe. Yes. I think here is this in the horizontal axis is the time is on second. And yeah, the yeah, well, time right. I think is uh, pretty small. Pretty small. Uh, yes. Well, it depends if it's inter island, then it's about uh, 100 milliseconds. If it's inter the island, then it's just uh, 10 milliseconds. I, I would be surprised if that happened. Depends on you. What, 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 what's your, your source in your uh, simulation? Uh, it's just the CFRC implementation in NS2. No, no, what's the source? Uh, I don't have source here. You know, I, I create a TFRC pair between every pair of nodes. But what's the source to send the traffic? So every node is source. What type CBR or on or Pareto? Uh, that's standard. The source, I just assume it's a, you know, a FTP, and you try to send as much as possible. But then that's against the argument, right? If you are using video, you are using CBR. It's mostly uh, actually for video. Right, so if you're using FTP, FTP yeah. will drive the loss, which you may or may not. So yeah, the experiment problem is a little bit self-defeating, right? Well, you, you well, presumably, if you're using TFRC, the source is sending at whatever rate it is. Yeah, TFRC is the same. Right, but, but the loss is driven by yourself, right? Because it's such a topology, so simple. It's in the loss of the behavior itself being well, used. Uh, 
Say, hey, for example, I'm very poor, say I'm happy to be, I won't push as much as possible, I will drive to loss. Yeah, so do you have any cross traffic? Is my question. Uh, I don't have other cross traffic, but I assume, you know, that, like the video, target video rate is so high, like uh, 1 million BPS, so that, uh, you know, the system cannot really support it. You have to, you will have to drive to loss. Yeah, but then that's personal loss. That's a very different thing. I think. Yeah, if the, you know, the network can really support all the rates, then, you know, the problem is easier, right? right. So we, we are actually targeting the hard problem. You know, you, you really want very high, but you cannot. You have to do rate control and congestion control so that, uh, you know, you achieve the good rate. I think that's the problem. Is, uh, the problem for allocate, you wouldn't do content control. You should do source submission control rate. Well, yeah, you have to do both. The source always want more. I want to make. Yeah, yeah I actually see the point. For example, if MPEG, you do have fluctuation of encoding rate, I frame P from B from yet in a certain sense, it can smooth out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Inherently, but, but that's a different story, but probably actually. You know. I, I would suggest so let's defer the question yeah. a bit here later. I mean, just imagine, I mean, you are doing, let's say, we have HD video conference, yes. which actually, I mean, is on the product right now. Right. That will require a lot of bit rate, yes. more than what the network can support. Sure. And I guess uh, Yao will show us how we can find the good bit rate to use for multi party conference system. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Jim, for making it clearer. Um, so um, basically, we formulate our problem as a utility maximization problem. Um, so generally, uh, when the network topology and uh, the network capacity is unknown to people, then similar like uh, TCP, uh, how do you find out these constraints and uh, you know, maximize the something that you want? Like in TCP, you want to maximize the rates of the TCP connections and with certain fairness. And uh, so this is actually the typical uh, you know, maximization formulation for this uh, protocols. Uh, generally, you have a utility function, which uh, actually is a function of those R. The R is the vector of those rate of the end-to-end -end links. And the utility function usually uh, is convex. Uh, it, we make it to be convex because then, you know, the system can, you know, the optimization problem can converge and, uh, you know, from any point. The uh, your maximization. Oh yeah, concave. Sorry, yeah, it's concave. Um, it has it, then in that point, you know, you can uh, the final the global optimization point is the uh, local optimization point, and the AR less than C actually you know specifies the network constraints. So the A actually is uh, you know the element in A is binary, which specify you know this E to P, E to E end to end links contains this link, uh, the physical link or not. And the C is the, you know, the capacity of those physical li links. Okay, um, then because these constraints are unknown, how do people solve this problem? Generally, uh, one, prob one solution is called the primal solution. Um, so instead of using the utility function only, it uh, add some penalty to this uh, utility function. So um, don't be scared by this, you know, uh, large, this complicated part here. Uh, let's see what's the derivative of this uh, whole function here. So basically it's the derivative of, you know, each utility function and then minus uh, this part. Actually, um, this part looks to be very complicated complex, but uh, it's just uh, the loss rate in the system. So basically, you can use the loss as a signal to control the system. If you observe loss, which means uh, you send too much, you have to you know, uh, slow down. If you do not observe loss, then you know, you're basically the utility function, the derivative of this utility function is kind of positive, so that makes you to increase your rate. So that's the 
uh, control system. And uh, in every round by round, we can you know, make the, the new rate to be the old rate plus the some, some step size function times the derivative. So that's how you control, you know, uh, how you use the feedback to control your system. And uh, there are some um, theory told us that if you do such kind of control, it will guarantee that the system will converge. And uh, converge, to the, um, converge to the global optimization point. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> let, let me use you know, uh, TCP as an example to show how this works. Actually, for TCP Reno, uh, people you know, do the reverse engineering and uh, you know, translate uh, its window-based uh, uh, congestion control to the rate-based one and, uh, and then figure out the utility function in TCP Reno is just uh, you know, this function. And the S here actually is the packet size. T is the run trip time. And then the derivative of this, uh, so it's this function. Um, basically, um, this is the, actually the step size function. And this is the derivative. Uh, we can see that for TCP Reno, um, you know, when you have higher rate, then this Ri actually increase, then this part is smaller. So which means with higher rate, you are more sensitive to the loss. And uh, the step size function actually is, uh, you know, is uh, proportional to Ri square, which means you know, once you have loss, then you will have a you know, large decrease of your rate. And uh, these two you know, times together uh, is a constant. Then you know, when you don't have loss, then you get the constant uh, increase on your rate, which kind of uh, mimic the, you know, the AIMD. Okay, then let's see how we um, formulate our problem in this utility maximization framework. So uh, what we care about is actually the, mean, the minimum mean cut from the source to the peers in this system. So uh, those are here actually we define as the minimum mean cut. And uh, then the utility function becomes you know, the utility function of those mean cut. And uh, still we have the uh, network uh, limitations. Um, besides this, we add another uh, term into this utility function. Because you know, if we assume we have a, you know, a maximum video rate that we want to achieve, say 100, uh, Mega BPS. Then, if you get the enough mean cut, you don't want to achieve more. So this is the difference between uh, ours and the TCP. TCP will, you know, try to grab as much resource as you can. And here, you know, if we achieve the enough rate, then we'll stop there. So that's why we uh, added a penalty here. So by control this uh, penalty, we can, you know, make the utility function. Uh, to be maximized when you achieve the certain rates. So, yeah, can't go back. Uh -huh. can't go back. Oh. so here row R is equal to mean minimal of the mean cut. All, all, so which means all the users responding to the same rate. Yeah. Yeah, that's a our that current that's assumption. Rate, yeah. They only differ because they have different utility functions. For the same rate, different users will have different utility functions. Um, yeah, you, potentially you can have different utility functions, but uh, actually we use the same utility function. No, they, they don't, right? Because they use of i, which means different, even though for the same rate, for example, 400 kilobits per second, mm -hmm. and different users will have different utility functions. They map different. 400 kilobits, I think that's fantastic. I think that's horrible. Uh -huh. And so therefore, they have different utility functions. Yeah, potentially you can make the utility function to be different. But uh, in, in our current uh, uh, implementation, we make the utility function to be same for every node. 
Yeah, yeah, but, but overall they all mapped into the from the same domain, which is utility, which is the rate, because there's a single rate. Yeah, so here yeah. different rates, you're looking at a multi-rate. Yeah, model rate. right. That's, I just want to clarify, that's number one. Number two is, since I think one thing you emphasized at the very beginning, you were trying to motivate is the latency. Mm -hmm. Right. So here we are, because for this type of thing, you can try to maximize the rate, but potentially you can go over really long links. For example, the connectivity yeah. happened to have a satellite link, which is fantastic. You probably even can do multi cap that, of course, when the complicated things are substantial. Right? Yeah. I can beam everything, everyone connect to a satellite, we all beam to a satellite, send up. Everyone can send to it, download to it. I can solve in a very nice way, right? And uh, I think he's going to put that cost, the delay into that cost thing. Uh, we will have, you know, uh, so talk about how do we that's one way control to that uh, to prefer the sh the links with low propagation delay. We have something you know to to add to this utility function, but it will show you know in the next uh, couple of slides. But uh, you are right that uh, you know it's not uh, very easy to you know to uh, simply minimize the delay using this framework. We have we have some ways to 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 kind of prefer the uh, quick links, but uh, it's not to minimize the link uh, to minimize the you know total delay. Okay, that's okay. And another thing which is not clear to me yet is how do you encode? This is essentially the demand is not simultaneous. I presume in video conference and most one guy is talking or you, you want like to send the video of everyone to everyone. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how you, you're encoding this one because imagine for example we're doing video conference in all this room. So at one instant, at each instant time there's only one guy which is source. So therefore the traffic matrix is from me to everyone. Or it's you from one guy to everyone. So therefore I only have uh, Suppose I have n users, I don't have n traffic matrices, and they are discrete. So what you're seeing is because your hosting, hosting is convex, so therefore you do a convex hall. How do you encode this? So, so far I think he's treating a simplified problem, say, assume, let's say, this, to simplify it, assume there's one or S is talking, everybody else is watching. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Only one guy. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so source, yeah. only one guy as it's a source. So it's not the case that actually can everyone can be a source potentially. Yeah. So that, that we will generalize to 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 to, to multi uh, to multi okay. So you talk about that part later. Uh, I don't know. If I will talk about that, but uh, you know that part is not uh, mm. uh, you know still in the early stage yet. Yeah, but that one is interesting. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I just because I want to make sure I don't miss it. Because that part is a convex combination. Yes, I can only get get the uh, my traffic demand matrix is a point, right? It's matrix. Imagine matrix mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I only have n point because I have n users. Therefore, yeah. yeah but you still need to handle this next one. Okay, go ahead. I wouldn't want to get too much. Okay. Just a short comment on the user scenarios. You can think of this multi-party conferencing interface. Uh, probably have two forms. One is that, let's say we have a multi-party conferencing, each of us, but equal size groups. Mm -hmm. On that, I basically, I mean, uh, interface. Then potentially what we will have is another sigma functions, which composite all the source together. Yeah. I think you did some you know, uh, experiment basically on that. You know, at least we think we can handle that scenario. Um, Another case, for example, is this. You let the active speaker, mm -hmm. so everyone of us see the active speaker. Right. But we will channel the active speaker to one server or, uh, let's say, a more powerful one. Sure. The reason is this. I mean, usually in multi-party conferencing, switching topology quickly is difficult to achieve. Sure. So you want the topology to be stable, or the delivery path to be stable. So one possibility is you always you send topology the, across all the sources. That's what you're saying. All the peers. What I mean is, yeah. So let, let's say you only want to show the active video of the current speaker. Mm -hmm. 
Now you want to channel this video to one source, and then he will distribute out to the rest of the people. That way, at least the distribution chain is more stable. Yeah, but that way probably is not efficient. But because not everyone like you must pick the source, the essentially the reflector very well, and so therefore we all send so that will interfere with the optimization because you are using up those capacities. So you will use the capacity of the node which is uploading. Right, uploading to the reflector and you bounce back. You also will incur the, the distribution. Probably can stop but go ahead. Um, then in our um, you know prime problem here, we also add the actually the loss as the uh, signal there. So um, similarly, you know, um, we can compute the derivative of this utility function, and then you know choose a step size there, and you know uh, adjust the link rates, and uh, you know. The same theory can, you know, guarantee that the system will finally uh, converge to the maximize the to the optimal point, so that you know you achieve the uh, you achieve the you know the maximum of the utility in this system. Um, so the utility function actually, you know, is chosen by us. Um, right now, we choose the utility function to be the logistic function. So for the logistic function, uh, its property is that when the, though the mean cut is much smaller than the video rate, we actually use though divided by v here, the v is the video rate. If the though is much smaller than the video rate, then you know, the, the utility, the derivative of this utility function is much large. And then it gives you the large incentive to increase your video rate. And when the uh, mean card is you know, more than the video rate, then the derivative is much smaller, it's close to zero, then you don't have the incentive to um, increase your rate. So that's how, you know, the, the, how we choose the utility function. Um, then let's talk about the, you know, the other part in this uh, derivatives. Um, I talked about utility function, then let's see the link cost, the penalty on the link. And uh, essentially we choose this function as uh, the function of, of Rij as Wij times the Rij raised to the power of 1 plus epsilon. Then the derivative of this function, uh, so this function actually is a convex function. So because we minus it, then it becomes concave. And uh, how do we prefer the links with short preference? We can control this Wij for different links. So basically, you can you know, measure the propagation delay there. And then you know, assign different weight based on the propagation delay. So for the uh, link with low propagation delay, because the weight is smaller, then you know, the penalty on this link is less. So to achieve the same you know, mean cut, there, there actually can be a lot of solution on this link rate, link rate allocations. But be, be, because you have this you know, uh, weight control there, you finally you will, you, know, use the, uh, you will prefer the links with low delay and kind of shift the traffic from those links with high delay to the links with low delay. And uh, the second uh, enhancement for the utility function is that we actually also add uh, the queuing delay there into this uh, derivative. So basically, we uh, also minus a uh, parameter times the queuing delay. So this can potentially you know, use the queuing delay as a signal so that you can kind of slow down before you really see loss. And for our you know, uh, uh, control, we choose the constant step size. So basically, it's this um, derivative, which you know, is kind of uh, from the utility function, and then times the constant step size. So every time you know, your adjustment is not uh, very large, which you know, 
potentially can make the link rates, the peer-to-peer -peer link rates, to be uh, stable. Compared to you know uh, TCP, you know the cons the step size is uh, is proportional to the rate raised to the power of two, you know which you know will uh, cause the large rate change when loss happens. So I don't understand the implication of adding queuing delay here. So adding queuing delay, you know. Um, Basically, when the you know the this we can take this as one part, right? And uh, you know um, when you achieve your certain rate, say the row is close to the video rate, and uh, then this part is very small. And the queuing delay actually, you know, uh, if you if your rate is kind of over the link network capacity, then you you see the queuing delay. Then you kind of make this. Uh, to possible to be negative, then you, you know that I should reduce the rate. So basically, queuing delay happens you know, faster than the loss. So that's kind of quicker signal. In a primal, for example, when your queuing delay is larger, you're already incurring uh, your penalty of your violation of the constraint, right? Yes. So I don't know, I forgot exactly the question you already know. How come, by the way, this part, I think you're missing that part. Uh, which part? Can you go back to, to your, your uh, right here? Yeah. Well, you can go, right, so that's the one. How come that disappeared, the last term? The last term here? Yes. Oh, uh, that's the delay here? That's the last. Oh, yeah. that's L. L, yeah. That's the loss, okay. yeah. So we use both the loss and the queuing delay, and uh, you know, Actually, before you see loss, you will see queuing delay first. And uh, you know, if, if you already, you will also do some uh, reaction to the queuing delay you see before you really see loss. Yeah, but even for example, but, but conceptually, those things are direct. Just, they are, in some sense, just, just your dual variables, right? Mm -hmm. The variables, it's a, yes, conceptually, when you converge, and if you don't violate the constraints, it will be zero. Yes. Okay. Here, actually, really, when you're approaching those constraints, I'll write a new variable start to play a role. To say, go back, go back, you're approaching the capacity. That's why new variable approaching the back. Yeah. So already L is playing that role. Yeah, L is. I mean, L wants to, okay, don't reach that, I'm going to push you back. Yeah. But somehow here, what you are doing is you also add a Q and D that I presume that's Q also, just QIJ, I believe? Yes. I think here the argument is like the Q and delay is also reflected on the dual uh, constraint, so maybe you can right. go back. So, I mean, the original term is basically that pattern, yeah. right? R and I minus C, that's somehow incident already reflected. So what, why, do we have any any sense how come that will help you in terms of adding Q and delay? The Q and yeah, delay we actually observe that, you know, if we don't have adding Q and delay there, for a system, you know, you will always drive to loss if the, you know, the network uh, Capacitor cannot really hold the your target video rate, yeah, but, but with queuing delay, you know you can sort of uh, in, in a lot of cases you can avoid uh, the loss. But you can do that. For example, instead of I, CL, CL is a virtual capacity, right? That's that's why people do virtual queuing. You don't drive to full capacity. You do a virtual target, and we're target with 95, 98 percent mm -hmm. before you really see a loss. You can already drive down. So here is this, I mean, uh, I think the argument is that, let's say we are using the virtual basic capacity as you suggested. Uh -huh. Now, the queuing delay is an early signal which precedes the loss. I mean, basically, I mean, on the routers, depending on whether you are using drop tail or using RED, right? Sure. Packet loss will appear at a different instance. I mean, drop tail, actually, you get the packet loss signal later. Red, you get packet loss before you reach the full capacity. Now here is this. I mean, the, uh, uh, the primary problem, the original problem is the, I mean, the integral uh, mm -hmm. signal on the other side, or basically on the upper side, right? It basically says, okay, if I s basically I exceed my capacity, the penalty items yeah. basically uh, start to kick in. Right, you need to and punish a little bit earlier. Yeah, right? they, they can punish. And there, uh, Normally, I will use the packet loss mm -hmm. as a punished terms. Right. A packet loss 
kicking too late. And uh, we are using the property that, I mean, uh, usually in the router uh, cases, before the packet loss happens, you see queuing delay, which happened early. And, uh, this actually is a consideration for the low delay requirement. If you, you know, always drive to loss, then you actually, your, your packet already, you know, observe a large queuing delay there. Then if you fluctuate, you know, you know around this uh, critical point, you always drive to loss and then reduce a little bit, and then drive to loss and reduce a little bit, you know, you will see your, your packet always see the constant uh, large queuing delay. But you already have queuing delay there, it can kind of, uh, you know, use, bef maybe before you, you know, reach loss, you already use that signal to slow your rate down. Then for all the packet, they will, in average, they will see low queuing delay. I think, Richard, you already made a good suggestion. So, I mean, you're talking about the, I mean, think about the virtual capacity comment right. you made, right? I mean, so currently, I mean, the CL is actual capacity, right? So, I mean, the curve start turning when it reach actual capacity. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine basically we reshape that fu function. Sure. I mean, that's basically just man made function, right? Right. We just reshape the function mm -hmm. so that before it reach capacity, some penalties basically kick in. And uh, this penalty is so basically kicking stages early. Let's say, I mean, basically, I mean, starting at some, uh, basically, I mean, when the uh, total capacity of the link reach some capacity, mm -hmm. basically that, that kicking. Um, in a sense, we are using delay sure. and the packet loss as a combined signal mm -hmm. to uh, basically approach that final functions. Sure. So we are arguing that, I mean, before you reach full capacity, Delay will give you some penalty. Right. So how much loss do we have in terms of optimality by adding this term? Uh, for some topologies, you know, you will completely see no loss. No, no. I, I, in terms of uh, compared with, because you're using primal solution, even your primal solution actually wouldn't convert to optimal solution. Uh, even this one, it's such a rig prime equal to zero. Uh -huh. That's optimal condition you convert the code. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And now you are adding more things into it. So eventually your system convert can go back to the last condition. Eventually when your system convert, go one more. No, no, I mean the minus the queuing stuff. Right. So here eventually your system convert will be RIG dot equal to zero. So you're adding a bunch of things which will skew more we are converting the point away from optimal. Uh, because it could get a wouldn't be equal to zero. Well, yes, if but you know if your if you do not, your rate is you know smaller than the network capacity, the queuing delay is is very small. It's just you know because of some burst, you may see a, a little bit of queuing delay. But in average, if you average out, then it's pretty small. Yeah. So you know unless your rate uh, average rate is over the network capacity, you will see high queuing delay. Otherwise, it's just uh, caused by the you know the, the burst of the the package. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you are arguing that because of the terms we added, it may not reach the full capacity allowed on the link. Yeah, I don't fully understand, right? Yeah, because you're adding these things, essentially skewing away your optimal solution. I guess they'll be in zero. Well, it's very but the queuing delay, but there's also, also tricky because queuing delay has some state, some memory. Right. Loss is memoryless. There's yeah, so some concerns. But, uh, given the rate is less than network capacity, you will observe a small number of queuing delay. Right. But you know, if you average out in the certain period, I, I, I think that one is smaller, and we do not observe. Uh, you know, the problem in this. Because the argument is some kind of conservation, right? I mean, so let's say, I mean, if you have, if we truly know the capacity of all the link, right. let's say analytically we can calculate that. So sure. Right. But if you're actually sending those rates down those, I mean, routers, mm -hmm. because you are so close to the capacity, sure. well, I mean, occasionally you see packet loss, and certainly you will see a lot of delay. Things. And that's not desirable in video conferencing. Sure. So we are pushing it away from that, I mean, so that the observed delay 
in Pekilox on the session is reduced. Yes, that can be interpretation of why we include including these two terms. Yeah. Right. So one way you can do the following, right? Essentially, this Q is equal to suppose we make our life simple that's M M one. That Q is equal to one over C minus your R I G. No, sigma L. So Q and delay is equal to sum of one over the amount. So basically, for all the L's along this I G link. R I G is from I to G or link I J? Uh, it's from peer I to peer J. Right. So essentially, you're adding all this Q and this term into it. Right. If you, you do a reverse, you probably can reverse it what you're changing of in terms of objective function. Uh, yes, if it's M and one, yeah. Sure. Because that's easy analytical extraction. You can go back. Okay, that's A minus P. Essentially, that's added something like a lock stuff into it. Right. Yeah. I think that that's a very good comment. To how to um, kind of estimate the Q, the effect of the Q Q and delay. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Then um, for the previous part, uh, you know the TT function is kind of defined by us, and uh, we also define the penalty of the link, and the loss and the Q and delay are you know measured. So we need actually to figure out what's the minimum mean cut and uh, what's the, you know, the derivative of this uh, mean cut with respect to the link rates. So this derivative actually, you know, uh, just the one or zero means this link is critical link to the mean cut or it's not. Um, to figure this out, uh, because we consider the small scale um, video conferencing, so we actually use the link states. So everybody can, you know, kind of report its RIJ to everybody else. So then everyone knows the, you know, the, the link rates, and then you can easily compute the, the mean cut and also check whether the link is a critical link or not. And uh, you know, for this uh, link rates, we can do PG pack on the video packets. And uh, you know, this update uh, is kind of periodically. Usually we set uh, 250 milliseconds uh, per update, so it's not a very you know large load if the network is small. The scale is small, like a 10 peers. Okay, um, and also um, to first our convergence, we also choose similar stuff as TCP. So the slow start um, when a new connection just uh, starts, then uh, if you do not see loss at the very beginning, then every peer periodically you double your uh, link rates. And once you see loss, or you have you know achieved the mean cut, which the mean cut is larger than your target video rate, then you stop the slow start. So this is essentially to help to convert convert fast. And uh, also let's consider the node dynamics. So in these systems, still there are node join and a node leave. Uh, for the join, um, you know, consider the user experience. Um, we try to minimize the impact on the existing peers in this system. And for the new node, you can probably wait five or ten seconds to get your video rate. But we don't want the existing peers to be kind of uh, uh, experience the bad video when someone joins. So that's our goal. To do so, uh, we define a so-called uh, dynamic period. In this dynamic period, so that's starting from since a node joins. In this period, we have some special um, processing on this uh, rate control algorithm. So basically for the source and the existing peers, they run the you know, previous rate control algorithm without consider the mean cut to the new peer. Because at the very beginning, the mean cut to the new source probably is zero. Then if you consider this, then, you know, uh, because the, the source to the existing node, the mean cut of them is, is much larger than zero, then you will think that all the links are not critical, 
compared to the minimal mean cut of the whole system, then everybody will reduce their rate. New node joins, mm -hmm. saying that it's initially its min cut will. Its min cut initially is zero, right? From source to the new node. Why? Because you don't have any other peer to send the traffic to you yet when you just join the network. Okay, so it's the min cut over the over the um, the traffic matrix R. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, the new node. First, do not receive any traffic. So the mean cut from source to the, the new node is zero. And if we you know, consider the minimal mean cut of the system, then it will be zero. And in this case, you, know, you will think that all the existing links are not critical because, uh, because the mean cut is zero. The, the critical links are those links to the new node. So that will, uh, you know, ask, make the existing peers to reduce their link rate, but they try to increase the uh, uploading rate to the new node. So that's we that's what we want to avoid at the dynamic period. And the second is for the new node. You know, the new node will because its mean cut is much smaller than the though uh, is much smaller than the video rate. It has a large incentive to increase its rate, but then it will aggressively grab the traffic from other peers. So it, it kind of affects the other nodes. <coughs> so what we want is we add some weight to the utility function uh, when a new node join in this dynamic period so that you, know, you are not so aggressive. For example, you have the, your utility function, then you use deal with some kind of bad convergence issues, I guess, right? Uh, it's deal with the transit the... states when new node join. Yeah, but I mean, in principle, when new node joins, you can just like resolve this problem. Yes. And uh, we'll set up a new arm. And right, but the, during the only this guys won't be disturbed. I mean, some, some, some kind of convergence problem you're dealing with. Not, we, we actually want to be control the, 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 the path of the convergence. We don't want to, in, during this convergence, you know, the existing peers uh, receive bad video rate. Because when everyone wants to upload to the new, new peer, you may make that uh, you upload to the other existing peer to decrease. Do, do you then you. Yes, I, I think this basically the problem is solved the convergence issue during the new node is joining. And this is related to how we currently formulate it. So I'm going to record the current formulation is minimize, uh, sorry, maximize the link out to all peers. When the new node joining in, if we assume its initial rate is zero, then the whole uh, basically function of the whole link out becomes zero. Yeah, that's talking about like an initial rate. If you just solve the problem, let's say you could solve the problem in some central location. Solve the problem means choose an R, an RI, an RIJ. So you need to know the, for example, the rate to that new node, right, in order to solve it. Of course, I, I think, I mean, one possibility assumption is basically to say, okay, this new node is going to be able to receive video rate R. And I think that might be equivalent to this solution. So in a sense, other peers just assume this new node can receive R. And basically, I mean, calculate based on that. Now the new peer need to ramp up. So this is starting from zero. That may be our interpretation of how, why we are putting that package.
Okay. Um, then when a node leaves without the notification, then you know all the receivers that uh, you know receiving the traffic from this leaving peer are affected. Then you know we have to readjust uh, the rates in the system. So to faster the you know convergence to the new states, then we we, all, we use slow start here. Okay, um, then let's see how we uh, deliver this content. Basically, we have two approaches. One is network coding. The other is, uh, the other is using the tree-based algorithm. For network coding, I think you know, um, everybody here knows a lot, so I, can, I do not need to introduce it. But basically, the disadvantage of this network coding here is, uh, first, it has the packet head overhead. The second is that uh, it will generate some delay. Um, first, we cannot use the generation-based approach because you know otherwise you have to a large delay of this whole generation. The second is that uh, even you use the earliest decoding, still there is some uh, decoding delay there. Um, so, in our approach, we try to you know uh, do the earliest decoding uh, as possible as we can. So the strategy of the coding is that we do not have generation here and we conceptually we max we mix all the packet together but because we use we have feedbacks so we can avoid the mixing packets that the receiver already decodes so that we can save the you know the coding overhead but conceptually we can mix the packet all the packets and then for this case you know, you can decode the packet as long as your main card is larger than video rate, right? Because you you know, you receive more packets than than the original packets. Then you know your ma your matrix your matrix will have the full rank, and then you can decode them all. But it will in it will introduce the decoding delay in different uh, aspects. The first one is that you know because uh, there are delay difference on the different paths. From the source to the receiver, you know, if some packet come late, come very slow, then you know it may makes other packets that go through the quick links to be unable to be decoded. And the second is the loss may cause the uh, the decode delay. If one packet is lost, say you you first you you will get packet one. Second, you get a packet one plus packet two. Third, you get a packet one plus two plus three. Then, if everything is good, you can decode every packet. But somehow, if packet you know one plus two is is lost, then you cannot decode them. Even with you have some redundancy, you know you say ten percent redundancy. Then probably when you receive the tenth packet, you get the, those redundancy packet so that you can decode it. So this loss will kind of cause the large decoding delay here. So in our observation, we see that easily uh, the matrix grows up to uh, like 5 to 10 rows because of the loss or the delay difference. The, the delay difference is the same as in the tree. Uh, yes, but uh, in tree, you know, it's, if this you go through a slow path, then it just affects your packet only. But for the network coding, you know, you may affect other packets because other packets can are waiting for you so that they can be decoded. Right, assume you send one packet one from one pass, packet one plus two from another pass, and a packet one plus two plus three. Even in a tree, I mean, if you send, I mean, if you send, it, let's say you're coding a frame and you're sending different packets on different trees, then you still have to wait for the worst case. Delay. Um, I guess he's concerned that the network coding uh, that that would cause the, 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 the delay spread problem would cause further delays in, in, in decoding. That's why? Uh, In in cheap case, you know, if one packet uh, comes later than like 200 milliseconds, then you probably drop it. 
that's, that's your you know, cost. But in network coding part, if this one, this packet comes uh, you know, after 200 milliseconds, it may cause the, some previous packet can not be encoded. And they, you, you, know, you drop all these packets because they are more than the delay requirement. So in this case, it will you know, cause I mean, different results, different. So you're putting it into the same category as the loss? Uh, yeah, if, you, if your packet you know, is over 200 milliseconds, you cannot you know, use this packet. It's, it's like a loss. And it will cause some you know, other packets to be dropped as well. And another approach we use is you know, packing trees. In that way, you know, uh, you know, we calculate the mean card, then we decided the video rate, which is mean card divided by R, and then we can you know, uh, use the element algorithm to pack in these trees and sending out the packet using the source packing trees encoded in the packet. And for the peers, they just forward those uh, you know, tree packets. And then if they have the you know, redundancy, capacity because we, we pack the video rate to be smaller than the mean cut, then you have the redundancy capacity, then use network coding to send to gain the robustness to the loss or some jitters. Um, so here's a simple comparison. Uh, for the network coding, it's kind of a clean solution. And in multicast case, it will you know, actually uh, be optimal, but for the the uh, better part is it has uh, some decoding delay. And in the ex experiment, I will show that uh, there are some loss and delay difference. And for the tree packing, it has low delay, but uh, uh, it's not uh, optimal for multicast case. And uh, there are some adoption, adaptation delay for the repacking trees. OK, let's see evaluation. Basically, I use NS2. And, uh, we studied two type typical topologies, but uh, in the simulation, I without I, I only show the one with the island model, and uh, I, we have scenarios with or without slow start, with or without propagation delay, and uh, the delay difference between the tree packing and the network coding, and how uh, the the rate adapts when the node join and leave. Uh, the topology is kind of standard topology we always use is the dumbbell one. And uh, the bottleneck link is from R1 to R2, which is uh, 500 kbps. And uh, the round trip delay, uh, no, and uh, the one way inter island delay is about 50 milliseconds, and the intra island delay is about 10 milliseconds. So from source to B, a packet will uh, uh, um, have at least uh, like 50 milliseconds delay here. OK, um, here is the convergence result without a slow start. Um, the left figure is the rate of peer A, which you know, is in the same island as the source. Uh, we can see that uh, generally uh, the red line means the total receive rate, and uh, the green line means the, you know, the innovative packet rate, which is the video rate. Um, basically, uh, they use about uh, uh, seven seconds to converge to the final states, and then st stable there. When does the time start at 10? The time starts at uh, time 10, yeah. So the, ch the video starts at time 10. Yeah, it always starts time 10 in the following evaluation results. Then with slow start, actually we can see the convergence is uh, we can see that it actually achieved the good video rate very quickly, just one or two seconds. And because uh, with slow start, it actually first uh, you know, grab more than enough rate and then uh, decrease because that, uh, the utility function finds that the penalty is too large and you already achieved the good rate. So uh, also, uh, actually, in this uh, simulation, I do not use propagation delay yet because propagation delay will when we use propagation delay there, it will you know, shift the traffic to the short links and uh, make the convergence to be different. Um, so this is the, you know, the delay uh, cumulative 
distributed function of the delays uh, using the packing tree algorithm, we can see that uh, uh, for most uh, uh, packets, you know, their delay is just uh, 100 uh, uh, milliseconds for peer B and C, which is inter, is not in the same island of, as a source. But for peer A, which, you know, who's in the same island, actually, uh, it, for a lot of packets, 40% of them, they receive low delay because these packets are from the source directly. And then for other part of packet, they are from the, you know, from B and C, back from another island. So it makes a large delay here. And uh, this is the, uh, you know, comparison between the network coding and the network and the packing tree. So basically they are quite similar, but the uh, network coding, uh, in average, use 10, 10 milliseconds more because of the decoding delay. So basically, that the first part, even if it was network coding, is because you actually, the, the, the things that sent from the source is still uncoded. That's why you still can have the low delay. Uh, yes. Yeah. If, you, if you still code them, maybe they'll be the same. Be, uh, matching them. Uh, like that. So, right. So a certain number of uh, packets are still uncoded packet in, even when we use the network coding. So basically, the, 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 the left part is because the packet sent from the source is always uncoded. Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the maximum delay between the two? Um, the maximum delay. Uh, Actually, for, for network coding part, the maximum delay are you know, larger than, than the tree packing. Because sometimes you know, the, the, the matrix piles up because uh, it cannot decode it. Um, so in, in the network coding case, is it all pure network coding? Are you doing? We, well, our strategy is that the, the packet from the source it's always uncoded. Then the, the, when the peer receives the packet, it will uh, send out one copy of the uncoded packet. And the other... Wait, which scheme are you talking about? So for I the network coding-based approach. Even when we use the network coding approach to minimize the, the decoding delay, we send a certain amount of the uncoded packet in the system, as long as we are sure that this packet uh, will not be, be kind of forwarded by others. For example, the source always can always send out the uncoded packet, because that packet is guaranteed to be innovative. And then, and then when a peer receives this uncoded packet, it may you know, send it out a couple of times. But for the first time, it sends the original packet. For the other times, it will mix this packet with, with other packets. So basically, uh, two copies of all the video packets are encoded in this system. The source sends one copy, and the other peers send out one copy. What my take is, the purpose of sending copy of unencoded packet is to reduce the average decoding delay, or let's say midpoint decoding delay. Low. It helps to reduce those lower percentile values. The reason is for those packets, they do not need to be decoded. Right? You do not need to receive other mixed packet to be able to see the content in those packets. So those content is very I think y'all's rule is more like saying, let's say I send one copy of all the packet out in uncoded fashion. So you can think of it as systematic network coding in that case. You send one times rate as uncoded packet, basically just sprinkle them out. Now for video playback, most of the case, your, uh, uh, your uh, basic jitter buffer control need to target a high percentile delay case, right? I mean, for example, you need to accommodate, let's say, 99% of the packet arrival, 
can control your jitterbug for that lab. So in those cases, uh, I think whether you send uncoded packet or encoded packet totally from the source, performance is about the same. Did this answer your question, or I'm answering a different thing? Uh, than I mean, asking. well, maybe. I, I mean, it just seems like kind of a hack that uh, would have been achieved anyway. Just, I mean, but if you if you receive a the first packet, um, the first coded packet from a, um, the first packet that's that is any mixture of a of the of the of the newest source packet will be uncoded mm -hmm. yeah. anyway. So to have a special rule about I'm going to send. Such a packet uncoded seems. Well, I think it will help when you know when some like the new packet, the latest packet from the source, uh, has long delay to reach the peer. For example, the new packet, oh, because of some reason, it just reached the peer at around 200 milliseconds. Then, if you you know. This is coded packet. You are waiting some other packet. Then this packet is probably you know useless to you because it's above the delay. Okay, let me ask another question. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you had mentioned before the slide that there was um, that the, I guess you were doing some hybrid thing where the tree you pack trees to uh -huh. make up the bulk of the tr traffic, and then the network coding would add sort of the MVC part of it. Yeah. So. When you're comparing these two things, which of these is that system? I mean, both both of them use network coding and packing trees, so I'm kind of confused. Is this a pure network coding system? Is this a pure packing tree system? Or is the combination? I mean, what are we looking at? Uh, for the tree packing, it's basically kind of hybrid one. Okay. But a tree, but a tree packets, you know, the, those uncoded packets, you know, probably can already uh, you know, send all the data, but the network coding, the, the function of network coding is just to, to make it robust to the jitter or to the loss. This case over here. Yeah, for the right case. Okay, and what is this? For the left, left case, you know, basically it uses the network coding, but uh, we don't have any tree there, but somehow we try to uh, send the uncoded packet as much as possible so that we can okay. reduce delay. Both of them have some element of both. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah, maybe for clarification, have you have a graph which showing you only use narrow coding? So basically, I mean, all the packets spit out by the source, let's say just randomly and encode it. So uh, I assume you must have run the experiment like that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, the, all the experiments, uh, you know, do not uh, send any uh, uncoded packet using the network coding approach. Maybe and in comments, just what, what the curve will look like if you don't have a uh, I don't have that graph right now, but uh, the the part is then you know for this part you you will don't see you may not see like this good shape here because the packet uh, from source of to peer to peer A you know have to wait the packet from source to the next island and back so that uh, because you look at our topology. You know, some packets are from source directly, some other are goes from source to B and then back to this A. So in if then if the all packets are coded, then sometimes the A, you know, receive packet Does one plus. Delay mean, then? Does the graph your graph? The this is CDR. Yeah. CDR. Uh -huh. okay. End to end. Time, between the time a packet is generated in the source and the time you decode it. Are you looking at the link delay or the total delay of the packet? Okay. Just the total delay of the packet. So basically, you know, you, you will not see this shape here. Probably all are here. Because you have to, you know, wait the packet to go to the another island and go back so that you can decode it. One, one thing I observe is this. I mean, our inherent maximization is the rate maximization. Delay currently is uh, basically clicking as a penalty term. 
So I think in this dumbbell topology, we actually use as crosslink. Even supposedly, yeah, I, I for just think game. you know it's probably um, it's a little unfair or not not the right thing to be looking at here because you know the, the packet every pack you know the delay of, the end end delay of every packet because you have to push push through a certain amount of rate to, to decode this video and. Mm -hmm. Um, some of that rate will be transmitted over short pads, and some have to be transmitted over longer pads because you can't fit all that rate over the short pads. Yeah. So to count the short pads as if they're oh they're faster doesn't make any sense because you can only decode let's say a video frame when you have all of the the bits to decode that frame. So. It's a little bit um, un unfair, I think, to the network coding. But I understand what you're measuring, um, whether it really means anything in practice would be a different thing. Um, then, you know, as we said, we have a propagation delay in the penalty of the link cost. In that case, uh, here shows the rate from the source to peer A. And then at the very beginning, you know, they converge to one state. And then because this link, you know, has short, has lower propagation delay than it kind of shifted the traffic from the other links, you know, those cross island links up to this uh, quick links. And then, you know, this can reduce the delay from, you know, uh, peer A receives, decodes the packets. And uh, in that case, you know, the shape kind of, you know, changed for, this, for the accumulate distributed function for the PAA. So basically this part, you know, increased uh, from, you know, 40%, 45% to, you know, 70%. You know, if we run uh, more time, then actually this one should, you know, goes back, goes to, you know, close to one. Because the PAA receive all the traffic from source directly. So this is how the you know the uh, propagation delay can help, and uh, then it can reduce the average delay you know in this case to 60 milliseconds. Um, and then let's see how it works when the node join and the leave. Um, here we assume you know we have uh, such events at a time 10 peer B joins. So at that time you have only peers the source and the peer B here, and then as Time 32, then peer A joins, and then peer C joins, and then peer B leaves, and then peer A leaves. So we make you know the it to be dynamic in terms of the nodes. Um, so this is the rate of the peer B, you know, which is in, in a different island as the source. Uh, at the very because B joins at the uh, is the first peer join the network, join the channel. So your slow start, you know, after a couple of seconds, uh, be you know, uh, grab the video rate to be 400 kbps, and then at a time 32, peer A joins, uh, because you know peer A many is in the same island as source, so peer A actually grab the traffic from source directly, and uh, do not affect the peer B, because you know uh, this from S to A has very large bandwidth, so. Actually, it doesn't affect uh, you know PRB much. And then when PSC joins, uh, it has the large effect on PRB because C is in the same island as B, and the bottleneck link, you know, is the the inter-island link. When C try to grab traffic, you know, it will grab from source from PA. Then it makes the you know uh, it uh, use more uh, resource than the bottleneck link, then we will see large queuing delay, and then we will see loss, and then uh, makes the system, you know, the mean card to be lower, and then you know we can see at this there is kind of uh, the this red line is the receive rate, and the green line is you know the innovative packet rate. So it's kind of a, a drop 
has a dip there. So that's how a uh, peer join affects the rate. And yeah. yeah, yeah, it recovers, and uh, and uh, the effect is not uh, you know very large. You know you have a little bit uh, rate drop, but uh, it doesn't uh, affect much. So when it recovers, it's getting stuff from B. It's yeah, it will get uh, get from B because the bottleneck link is you know there. When whenever source sent to C, then this traffic should have should be sent to B as well. So um, because there's so much jitter on this green line, it's hard for me to see. I mean, are, are there any losses anywhere? Uh, there is loss. I, did, I mean, if didn't you average it over time, and it'll all it'll be like constant 100, uh, whatever, 400. 400, yeah. 400 is the, our target video rate here. Yeah, I mean, so does it ever dip below? I'm sorry? Is it ever dipped below 400? Yes, here you know here actually it's just a 350, uh, actually less than 350, so it has dips there. I mean after you average it all, if you average out, uh, it's kind of here uh, about 350 probably in, in this. I think Phil's question is, is actually video. I mean uh, the video conferencing experience is going to be interrupted. They have to start with the panels to 400 with this, you have to start with it. The actual supportable video is probably 350 something. Yeah, during that little period. During that right. Okay. Right, so the channel rate from S to B is 500, right? The minimal cut. The minimal... Why, why you don't convert to 500? The first convert uh, to 500 in the last generation, right? It's, I think converts to something like 450. Yeah, but why not convert to 500? Because from your figure, it seems that from S to B, we only be over there 500. Worth because we, you know, we, uh, as we said, we just want to convert to a certain rate. Do not grab all the possible rate. If our video rate, target video rate, is 400 kbps, then we convert to, say, 1.1 times this 400. So we just grab 440. I think you are trying to maximize this rate, or you have a fixed target. We have a fixed target. So you want the row, or row to be less than or equal to a target, or greater than or equal to greater, like 1.1 1. 1. 1 of the target. We so want you to do be. Want reach, so that's part. Of, I don't know if that's the one reason I missed your target. So basically, eventually, our peak function is maximize the function, and your upper bound the row to be less than or equal to 1.1. 1. 1. Some you design the utility function so that the optimal is achieved at 1.1. So that's actually the panel. 1.1 times the video rate. The time, what's the video rate? Say you, you fix your resolution some, some kind of encoding. Some part. rate that you think it's, it's fast enough for you, like a 500 or 1 mega. So you decided this parameter. Me if I'm wrong, I think we stable also uh, the curves at the rate around 450 delay starts kicking. I mean, network delay terms, uh, I mean, because we use the network delay term in the convergence, right? That delay term will kick in at some point. Yeah. Is that will kick in basically at something like 450? Mm, not really. In this case, may not. Because okay. I, I can, you know, I change the utility function a little bit, you know, to try to grab 1.2 uh, of the video rate. That's the 480k. Then, you know, the, the rate will increase to 480 okay. instead of 440. So you are saying that from the way you set up, even if, for example, the middle of the green link has two meg, you're still going to reach at 450. If your target rate is 400, but if your target is three meg, then you will, you know, achieve two meg because that's the maximum you can achieve. So if you target video rate too high, then the, the loss and the queuing delay will kick in. Sure. If you do not, then the link penalty will kick in. OK, then let's see. Uh, for the PA, so at time 30, it joins. Because uh, we do not have slow start here, then it converge a little bit slower. It have five seconds to join the network. And then when PLC joins, it also affects a little bit, but because A, you know, get most traffic from source directly, so the effect is not much large, it's not serious. 
And then at time 70, uh, PRB actually leaves the network because a lot of traffic A grab actually are from source to B and then back to A. Then you know, there's a dip there because the, when PRB leaves, the main card of the system you know, drops. All the uploading rate from B is kind of turns out to be zero suddenly. So in this case, we use you know, slow start to try to uh, reach the new converging states. And uh, you know, after like two or three seconds, you know, the rate goes back. So sl the slow start actually <clears throat> helps us to you know, uh, quickly convert back. Is this basically I mean, a simulation uh, with propagation delay or without propagation? Without. Without. without propagation. Yeah. Yes. If with propagation delay, then for PIA, uh, it will probably still observe this one. It's because the mean cut, the minimal mean cut of the whole system drops because C is still there. If with propagation delay, probably the effect here is small. Uh, Simply because yeah. I mean, basically you will gradually shift the rate, uh, basically from S to A, and you use less on the link of B to A. Yeah. And uh, this is the rate of you know PLC. Uh, at 50 seconds, it joins the network, take about five seconds to converge, and when PLB leave. Uh, you know, the, it use slow start to come, converge back, and when PIA leave, it use slow start again and uh, to quickly grab the uh, video rate. How do you know when you use slow start? So, uh, basically, if source detected that someone leave the network, then I, I certainly I know that uh, all the upload rate from that peer is gone. Then I ask everybody to. To redo slow start to try to quickly converge back. So basically, source will send out a signal say, "Let's converge to slow start quickly." So uh, this plots the scatter of the delays of every packet. So um, basically, for the PA, you know, at uh, the very beginning, you know, it has some packets receive you know large delay because this is still in the convergent states, and after some time, you know, this 50 seconds when PSC joins, then uh, it receive you know the delay increase a little bit, and uh, we can see that you know there's, there are two lines. This lines means the packet you know from the source directly, and these lines are the packet you know goes back to from source to B, C, and then back to A, and uh, um, because when after C joins, the, this, the, this delay is larger because uh, kind of uh, the bottleneck link reason, I guess. And for the PLB, uh, in time 50 seconds, uh, at a 30 seconds, it doesn't affect because A just gathers the traffic from source directly. But when the C joins, uh, it makes that some packet has, uh, a few packets actually have low, have large, Delay. Okay, um, then let's see some other issues we may have. So the first one is the you know TCP friendly issue. Um, so basically, uh, if we have you know two different uh, utility maximization algorithms and they co they co work in the same system, then what will they converge? Actually, they will converge into this state. So this is the derivative of the first. First utility function, and they will be equal and equal to L. L, if we just use loss, then the L is the loss rate there. So basically, they will see the same loss rate, and they make them derivative to be just equal to loss. So that's the you know convergence and the maximization point in the system. But the, because you know our utility function uh, is kind of quite different to TCP's uh, utility function, so you know, the convergence point is kind of, uh, it's hard to, uh, hard to say. And also, one issue is how do we define, you know, the friendly? Uh, because here, suppose we have n peers, then it's equivalent to that we, we can have, you know, n squared TCP links. 
right up between every pair you can have a actually between every pair you have a peer to peer link and also we we, we our target is is main card it's not a, a single link so even you know uh, probably this link is potentially important for the main card and uh, we, we really want to increase this link but for some other links we be we will get less rate is fine because it doesn't affect the main card so it's really you know so far I'm not sure you know what kind of friendly uh, we want to achieve to TCP but uh, let's see uh, what we have right now so basically I I use a simple topology just one, one source one receiver and then I run one session of our uh, utility maximization based approach and the other we have five TCP sessions for this graph and the the link capacity is two mag so when it converges at the at this part that's the TCP are still working and uh, since time 100 the TCP's connections are gone so so before you know the, when the TCP are competing with our approach uh, in this case uh, we receive you know about uh, 480 k bps and the tcp receive 300 k bps for every tcp connection and uh, uh, in another experiment i use 10 tcp connections there um, then for our session you know basically it drops from 480 to 420 k bps and for tcp connections they they actually kind of half their rate to achieve 150 in average. So this uh, graph shows that uh, uh, in the current parameter setup and uh, this utility function, we are kind of uh, more aggressive than TCP. Because you know, when our rate is less than the video rate, the mean cut is less than video rate, we have kind of large incentive to request more rates. is say 400 kilobits per second instead of 2 mag. Uh, in that case, I guess probably uh, if we set our target rate is 500, then because we achieve you know, less than 400, we cannot achieve more than 400. We achieve less than 400, our incentive to, you know, the derivative of function is pretty large. So probably for TV it's very small. Yes, in that case, true. probably it's more dramatic. Yes. Yeah, in that case, I guess we dominate TCP. Maybe we get a 300 and the all other TCP share, you know, those 100. Is that because, I mean, uh, TCP is using uh, multiple decrease? Uh, so basically, it's because TCP is, you know, you look at the, the utility function, it's, you know, something over X to 2. You know, x is the rate. So the rate is higher than the TCP, you know, the derivative is smaller. But our curve is more aggressive. Yeah, our curve is more aggressive. Even if we look at the derivative of the utility function, you know, TCP drops quickly and our drops slowly. So that makes the convergence point to, to be favor our session. The shape of the utility curve we are using, right? Especially sure. shape. Okay. Right. Okay, uh, another um, problem is how do we make you know multi-source here? So in the previous uh, uh, experiment I always use just a single source. Uh, one approach is that we can, you know, for the different source we can separate them as different sessions, then they compete, you know, you compete with yourself. Basically, using the network signals like the queuing delay and the loss, and this one is simple. We do not change anything. We can, you know, just run the old program. And I actually did some experiments using this part. So uh, I run like a, uh, make every node to be a source, and uh, you know, if we have three pairs, then we have three source and uh, and uh, three, you know, kind of videos channels and competing with my, with themselves. And uh, the, some results shows that, uh, you know. Uh, using the bottleneck, the uplink, uh, uplink bandwidth limitation model, and it seems to be fine. You know, they still convert to the good states. And uh, 
I think you know the theory also will kind of uh, the theory will itself also tells that they should because they use the same you know utility function. They are fair to fair to each other. Um, another approach is you know we can combine the sessions from different sources. So a simple way is you know you introduce a virtual source node there, and the virtual source node you know send the uh, packet to the real sources. So you actually add some virtual links and uh, a virtual node, and then you can do network coding. The network coding part is same. You know mix just mix every packet from the virtual source, and for the packing tree, it's a little bit more tricky. You know you need a, a central node to uh, tell the all the source, the real source, to pack the trees. Uh, conceptually, you can you know use the link rate, links, link states to pack tree separately for every source. But uh, because you know a synchron synchronization problem, every one, every real source may not see the same states. You know then their packing tree may be kind of uh, collide from each other. That's why we need kind of some central algorithm so that they you know they they can pack the uh, different sorts can pack the right tree so that they you know use the whole use the link rates. Uh, so to conclude, um, we kind of designed the utility maximization based approach to control the rates in the peer to peer system, and uh, um, they can discover the network capacity automatically, and uh, it has the fast convergence and robust to the dynamics. But we have a lot of you know other issues to study like TCP friendly. Uh, the multi-source part is still in the early stage, and uh, you know the, all the evaluation are on the NS2. We actually really need some uh, system build up on the real networks, and also uh, what happens if we have you know the server to help, and in that case uh, the problem changes. You know the broadcast problem may become the multicast problem, and it affects the design. And also another issue is how to you know. Uh, combine both video and audio because for audio it's it has much lower rate but it has higher sensitivity on the delay so it's this issue we also need to consider yeah okay yeah thank you in open to any questions <laughs>